What's up guys? Thanks for checking out the channel, watching the video. Today we are making red velvet cake. So I kinda, I've always heard red velvet cake came around because somebody accidentally poured red food coloring in a chocolate cake and hence blah, blah, blah. So I started doing a little research. That's not really the way it came from. It's in the Victorian ages, they had two different kinds of cakes, like a sponge cake and a pound cake, and they were kind of dense cakes. Red velvet played into that, a velvet cake. Back in the day, they would use acids and chocolate together. When you mix those two together, it kind of gives off a reddish tint, hence the red. So they had a cake called a mahogany cake, which was a reddish brown cake, like the color of mahogany wood. Somewhere along the line around the 1911, they supposedly mixed that with a devil's food cake, so you had a dark cake with a reddish tint. You're getting closer to today's red velvet. The first thing at time it was served notably or in history was at Eaton's in Toronto. Um, on down the line around World War II, we started adding red food coloring into it. During the war, the red food coloring kind of couldn't get, so they started using beets and things like that. Spread it down to the south, we started throwing in buttermilk, we took it as our own, so now it's the epitome of a southern recipe. It became famous recently because of steel magnolias, and I think that's really popped up the, the notoriety on red velvet because everybody wanted a piece of Jackson's bleeding armadillo cake with gray icing, which we don't know how I would make gray icing. It's a quote. Anyway, guys, here's the recipe for red velvet cake. Hope you like it. Don't forget to hit subscribe down below. We need you all guys as subscribers. We're trying to grow our membership. You guys have a great week. We'll see you all soon. All right, guys, let's go ahead over the ingredients that we have for our cake. We're gonna put this together first. You're gonna start out with three cups of flour and you're gonna to mix together with that one teaspoon of baking soda, one half a teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of uh, cocoa, dark cocoa, unsweetened natural cocoa. In total, you're gonna to need two and one half sticks. That's one and a fourth cups of butter. You're gonna need one tablespoon of vanilla, one tablespoon of distilled white vinegar, one bottle, we're gonna use part of that, of red food coloring, four eggs separated, one cup of buttermilk, extra vanilla and a pinch of salt for the icing. We're gonna use one cup of vegetable oil or canola oil, powdered sugar, and then white sugar for the cake. So, first thing we wanna do is set out, oh, and cream cheese, oh, don't forget cream cheese, two blocks. We're gonna set our cream cheese and our butter out and let it come to room temperature. We're also gonna spray three eight inch cake pans and they're lined with parchment paper. I don't flour, pre-flour the cake pans because I don't like, it makes a gummy ring around the cake. So I know a lot of people say grease and flour. I don't do that. I just spray it really good and put a liner of parchment paper. All right, we got our softened butter. I actually zapped it a little bit. I probably got a little too much, but it's all right. So we're gonna put our butter in the mixer. We're gonna put our two cups of white sugar in here. We're going to mix this for about a minute until it's combined. Oops, sorry. Until it's combined and soft. It's not going to get fluffy like cookies and butter. If you ever mix, make cookies, you got to, until it's lighter in color. This is not going to do that. Good enough. To this, we are going to add our oil, which is one cup of vegetable oil. We're gonna add our egg yolks to that. We're gonna add our one tablespoon of vanilla extract to that. And we're gonna add our one teaspoon of distilled white vinegar to that. And then mix that together. And let that beat for eh, three minutes. While that's beating, we're going to mix together our dry ingredients. <coughs> That'll be your white, I mean your flour, all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of cocoa, one, one teaspoon of baking soda, and one half a teaspoon of salt. We would just want to whisk this together. 
if you've ever seen me bake stuff, I'm not really big on the whisking together, but this one's kind of important because of the cocoa. This will help the cocoa mix together. So go ahead and spend the extra time, whisk it with the flour, blah, blah, blah. That's about done. We want to add our food coloring, our red food coloring. All right, so we're about to three minutes now. We're gonna add our food coloring. This is one fluid ounce. I'm just probably gonna add about you want a lot of red food coloring. Turn on low, because Lord knows if you get this anywhere, it's gonna stain it. Kind of look at the color and see where you're going. You may want to get some more. And we do. You want it red, I'm talking red. You know what? One fluid ounce it is. Let that mix together. So now we're going to alternate flour and buttermilk. So we have one cup of buttermilk and our flour mix. Make sure that's on low. A dash of buttermilk. I'm gonna turn it off because it's gonna throw this. So I'm doing two thirds a cup at a time. So we have two different acids going in here, the vinegar and the buttermilk. Okay, just kill it. Another two thirds of this. And I just made a mess. More buttermilk. Dump the rest of the buttermilk. Dump the rest of the dry. Just let that mix till it's combined. Stop, scrape down your sides. to make sure everything's done. I'm telling you, it looks like a crime scene because of the red food coloring. Just let that mix for a sec. As Martha says, Martha Stewart, an, an impeccably clean bowl. You don't want any oils, any kind of oil residue in your bowl when you're trying to beat egg whites or it will fail. So we're gonna put our egg whites in and we're gonna beat that Okay, we're gonna call that Stiff Peaks. All right. So we have our cake batter. 
I'm just gonna stir it around here to make sure it's mixed really well. We're gonna dump your egg whites in. We wanna fold these together. Much like folding in the cheese, if you get that reference, the way to fold is to cut in the middle, bring it up, fold. Just do like that. You just don't wanna stir it hard, you wanna fold it in gently so you're not gonna deflate your egg whites. Just give it time. It takes a minute. You want to get all those clumps of egg whites out. Okay. All right, we're ready to put it in the pan. I'm just going to use my cup. Measure it. So I just kind of divvy it out a little bit at a time. So one. If you're really obsessive, you could measure and uh, weigh it. I'm not that obsessive. Okay, so one more last one. Put one more in that. We want to shake this or spread this around to even it out. All right, kids. Ready for the oven. I'm going to set a timer for about 25 minutes. I'm going to check it to make sure it's done with a toothpick. And once that's done, we're going to take them out and let them cool. So about 25 minutes at 350. Okay, the cakes have come out of the oven. Don't do the finger test to touch it. Do the toothpick because it's very delicate. So just let it go. Don't press it down. Just let it dry perfectly until it's completely cool. Let's go ahead and make the icing. So in here we have a stick and a half, which is three-fourths of a cup of butter. Put this on and let it... It's at room temperature-ish. It's a little bit cold, but not much. Once you put it going in the mixer, it's gonna soften up. We'll put in a block of cream cheese. cheese. Scrape all the goodness out. Mix that in. We have a second block of cream cheese. This is also room temperature. I actually throw this in a little bit of warm water to get it a little warmer than room temperature. Yeah. 
cream cheese icing is really easy to make. And compared to that garbage that comes in the little tubs, it's worth this little bit of effort. Okay, so we're gonna mix together our butter and our cream cheese. Now, we have about five and a half cups of powdered sugar, confectioner sugar. What? I did it without a mess. But the mess is yet to come. And I told you. Okay. Mix that in. Just scrape down your sides. I'm going to add a pinch of salt. And about Two, uh, a uh, teaspoon and a half of vanilla. That's one. Two. Mix it well. And that's how easy it is to make cream cheese icing that tastes like a restaurant. Super easy. Boom. All right, let's put a crumb cake on crumb coat on the cake. So we're gonna do it directly into the cake container. If you're really worried about getting the icing on the edge, you can lay pieces of wax paper, ice it, and then pull that out. It's just for Mike and me. I'm not worried about it. So onto the bottom, we're gonna put a glob of icing. That prevents sliding. Center it. Now you can see, this is a really crummy cake. I'm not big into crumb coats, but I will crumb coat this and I'll show you what I mean. So we're gonna put a glob for layer number one. Start in the middle and push out, kind of waving it out delicately. Never have too much cream cheese icing. Okay, layer number one. Drop on layer number two. Crumbs are not going to matter on the interior to me. They don't. There might be some perfectionist out there that it does, but I don't really care. We've got one side over here that's a lot higher than the other one. Okay. Before you dip this back in there, you want to scrape it off because you don't want to put a dirty knife into your clean icing. So I'm just gonna actually use my finger. Scrape it off. 
grab it under that. Layer number three. And this one has a high side, so we're gonna put it up there. Okay. So now we're gonna put our crumb coat. Which basically your crumb coat is a thin layer of icing. And what this is gonna do, we're gonna put this in the refrigerator and let it get cold. That icing will get hard, so when you put your other, your final layer of icing on the outside, it's gonna be smooth and it's not gonna pick up these little crumbs like it's doing now. Okay, there's our top. Good, scrape your finger. Should probably just do that. It looks horrible here because you're picking up so many crumbs. All right, guys, I'm going to stick this in the refrigerator for 30 minutes or so till that outside edge gets cold. To prevent the rest of the icing from drying out, I'm going to scrape it and just put it in a bag. That way we're going to cut the end off and it's going to be easy to uh, put on the cake. What I'll do is push it all down to one end. Do not put this in the refrigerator because you will never get out of the bag. Just put that to the side to your cake chills. All right, guys, let's get ready to ice. So we have our icing in our bag. Push it to the edge. This is cold. This is not. So what I'm going to do is just kind of spread it out with the bag. Put blops everywhere. Do this thing. These are not the best bags for this. Because they have this weird little pleat at the corner. But I guess that's what I get for buying cheap Walmart bags. So we'll just blop some out. 
and then we'll just put some around the edge because we're gonna spread this with our offset spatula. Let me turn so you can see. So we're just applying it. This is basically all we're doing. All right. Starting at the middle. Now see it's not picking up the crumbs because we did a crumb coat. If we didn't do the crumb coat, crumb coat, we'd have red chunks all in the amazing cream cheese icing. See right there? That's some free crumbs. So we got a little bit, we scrape that up. I mean, inevitably get some crumbs in it. If you hear something, it's Michael over texting. And so I will probably leave this cake out. I like cakes cold. I like everything cold when it's sweet like this. Michael, not so much. And this is his cake, so we will do what he wants with it. As he shakes his head, yes. Trying to keep those crumbs inside. Yep. Get there. bit more icing in here. We'll put it right in these spots that are low. You want to go pretty fast too. You don't want your crumb cake to warm up while you're doing that. You want it to stay cold. Or you're gonna lose, it's not gonna have, there's no point in the crumb cake. Crumb cake. If you want a perfect top, you gotta wet your knife and spread that. We're not going for perfection. After all, it's for Mike. What? What?
I'm not gonna be OCD over this. I'm gonna let it go in just a second. I'll try to get these edges done. So I'm gonna kind of swirl the top a little bit. To make it beautiful. All right, guys, red velvet cake. All right, guys, let's give it a taste. We're gonna cut a piece. Clean your knife. First of all, smell chocolatey. Smell that buttermilk in it. Smell like cream cheese. Yes. Mmm. Okay. Here it goes. It's dense. Beautiful crumb. Bam. That is a good cake, kids. Not that much work. So much better than that box mix, which Michael bought still on the shelf. I'm not making it. For the little bit of effort, totally different. Different crumb, different everything compared to this to the box. And the cream cheese, we're not even gonna talk about that stuff in the tub anymore because I'm, I'm done. Anyway, guys, this is my red velvet cake. Enjoy it. Hope you guys like it. Please hit subscribe down below. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And we will see you guys next week. But he's down here sniffing at my feet, but can't have it because it's got chocolate. So, oh, 86 days to Disney. We're making our going to Disney. You guys have a great week. We'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching.